This is Arise News. We interrupt this program for a live event. It was obvious from the start of their journey into fertility that what the media aides and supporters of Bola A. Tunubu were doing was a random bite of the public profile of Fatuku Abubakar until they found an item they could chomp with their filthy teeth. It was amusing watching them running kitty cutter like a person will drink water, no one drop cup, as we say in Nigeria parlance, of a restless soul on a fruitless journey. So, eventually, they found that the affidavit that Atiku Abubakar deposed to in August 18 of 1973, that, was, that is 50 years plus ago, wherein expressed his wishes to be publicly known and addressed as Atiku Abubakar was signed on a Saturday. And voila, the APC ERATS found what they have been looking for. Extensively so. For them, it is important that the person called Bola E. Tunumbu was discovered to be the name of a female. Now, was it important that Bola E. Tunumbu forged a certificate he submitted to the Independent National Electoral Commission? Or that Bola E. Tunumbu is a guinea pig student of the Government College Lagos who was used to test run the school? four years before it was founded. All that matter to them is to pick a hole in Atiku Abubakar's public profile. Like the late fellow Anukla Kuti of Blessed Memory said, a be thief, you be robber. You are also a thief, it's not a defense to an accusation of theft. They thought they found someone else to share the inglorious stage of certificate forgery with. So, it was found that Atiku Abubakar's affidavit was signed on a Saturday. And yes, it was signed on a Saturday. And they went into a frenzy, oiled as a diesel train. They remind us of the 1974 album by the legendary Elton John titled Saturday night's all right for fighting. They bled and burn all decency. They have found a mate in their naked state. Oh Lord, Atiku's affidavit was signed on a Saturday. They screamed. The sound of it mes mes mesmerizes and intoxicates them. They get around oiled as a diesel train. But because we know the character of the man that we work for, we knew that their frenzy was all vain hallucinations. Ladies and gentlemen, at this particular point in time, I'll call in my colleague, Frank Schweibel. He took over the presentation. Frank. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi Paul Ibe, Special Ad Media Advisor to Atiku Abubakar. Interestingly, before I even continue, I would like to take a look at Atiku Abubakar's names vis-a-vis -vis the replacement of Siddiq. And in doing that, I will take a journey into the etymology of even the names itself. The origin of Siddiq in Arabic and what it represents. Particularly as the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, gave, his, uh, uh, gave those names, those two names to his bosom friend. Interestingly, in Arabic language, the word Azdika metamorphosed from Siddiq and it means friends. The prophet also termed Abu Bakr as Atik, letter A, T, E, E, and a Q, meaning the one who is protected from hellfire. 
Moreover, Abu Bakr is not a real name. It was a nickname in the holy books. The prophet's friend's real name is Abdallah. And in Arabic, any name with Abu in front of it is usually a nickname. Like the Saudi crown prince is called Abu Razas. In English, father of the bullets. Abu Bakr means father of the young camel. Well, we'll get to that. For, for those who know me as a teacher, they would understand where I'm coming from. So I will return to our research. We conducted a research into the registry of the Lagos State High Courts in the same year they claimed or the affidavit of Atik Bakar was signed on a Saturday. To see if it was really an absurdity to have court papers signed on a Saturday. The outcome of our findings showed clearly that there are court papers that were signed on Saturdays in the year 1973. Atiku Abubakar's affidavit was not the only one signed on Saturday, as the con men would want you to believe. Here and now, we shall show you the slides of our findings. Please, I need the cameras to return to this screen. What you see here is in the Federal Revenue Court of Nigeria, summons to parties by the registrar to settle record under 7 Rule 7, Board of the Internal Revenue in Lagos, dated 12th day of February, 1974. From there, I will take you to other documents. This is in the High Court of Lagos. When I mean High Court of Lagos, I'm talking of Tinubu's Lagos. Hearing notice, it may interest you to know that we have these are certified true copies. We got them certified by our lawyers. This, in this case, it's between T. Adeokin and Nigeria Airways Limited. This is a hearing notice that was issued by the order of the court on the 17th of March, 1973, as highlighted there. Please, you can run a check. 17th of March, 1973 is a Saturday. My dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and those of us watching from our homes this evening, Sunday evening, these are CTC copies done from the Lagos High Court. Now, I will go for that. This is another CTC copy. Seventy-three, Certified true copy from the Lagos State Judiciary. So if I go on and on, I light it. You, you would see that we made this official request through our council to the head of archive section of the Lagos High Court Ikeja. I'm talking of Ikeja is domiciled in Tinubu's Lagos. This is one of the documents we paid. So, ladies and gentlemen, the outcome of our findings clearly shows that what you just saw are court papers, documents that emanated from the courts that were signed, issued, and authored on Saturday, as at 1973, the same period that Tiku Abu Bakar's affidavit of change of name from Sadiq to Abu Bakar Atiku was done. Here and now, which, as, as I've just shown you the slides, as a practitioner of democracy, especially someone who sits on the chair of a president, you must live above board. A president must mirror the moral rectitude of trust and transparency. To be called the president of a country is to be an approximation of the values that such a country stands for. Nigeria does not stand for forgeries and impersonation. It is therefore on this note that we yet again call on President Bola A. Tinubu to follow the example of Atiku Abubakar to clear the air about the doubts and Kurukere about his past, just as we have done. Openly, publicly, and we took the pains to go to Lagos, his own Lagos, where he ruled and superintended and has been lord over for over 23 years. Since Lagos is his domain, we asked Bola A. Tinubu to boldly walk into Government College Lagos and make available to the world, just as we have done today, a copy of the 1970 certificate with which he sought admission into the Chicago State University. He may, well, he may as well tell us the business center inside Oluwale Market in Lagos, 
where the, where the document, the certificate was printed and given to uh, Chicago State University or where that certificate was gotten from, which was presented to the Independent National Electoral Commission. And if assuming the president is afraid to come out clean because we can only assume at this point that Bola A. Tinubu has some skeleton in his, in his closet or his cupboard, he should feel free to confide in us. You don't need to have over 2,000 media aides for you to do your job well. We are just three of us here, yet we went to Lagos, Tinubu's Lagos, to investigate and put to rest the issue of articles of Fidavit, which was signed on a Saturday. We took it upon ourselves to say, look, we must come out clean. We cannot be on the same page with a certificate forger. So he can confide in us. We will help him to do this. And it is embarrassing enough that the FBI and some anti-crime agencies in the United States are poised to start releasing information on our president any moment from now. It is more embarrassing that Bola A. Tinubu will fight tooth and nail to block these discoveries about his past, saying such will cause him irreparable damage. Bola A. Tinubu needs to be reminded that what the FBI and the U.S. security agencies are set to do by releasing the FBI Tinubu files will undoubtedly cause Nigeria irreparable damage. Nigeria is a country of laws, and no one single man or woman, no matter how highly placed, is bigger than our laws. We hope that the discovery into Article Saturday affidavit by his own media team will raise this issue and provide the opportunity for Bola A. Tinubu's team to come clean with its decades of forgeries and lies. Nigerians are waiting for them to put an end to this kindergarten kindergarten Tom and Jerry that has done nothing but brought embarrassment and humiliation to our country and its people. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I would want to say that Atiku Abubakar, former Vice President for the Federal Republic of Nigeria, whom the, 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 the media team of uh, Bola A. Tinubu recognized as being someone who is associated with forgery just like their boss, we have decided to come out clean today. We waited this long to respond to them, to their inaccuracies and reckless vituperations because we believe in detailed presentations, because we believe Nigerians deserve to know the truth and, and the truth will set us all free. That is why we invited you today and that's why we decided to speak to Nigerians today on our discoveries. This is discovery number two. You remember we went to Chicago. We brought discoveries. At least in Chicago, you, we, we, uh, when we brought out the documents from Chicago, we knew whether the, uh, somebody attended a university, either as a male or a female, and so many other inconsistencies and incongruities in those documents and those revelations we saw there. Today is another day of discovery. We have proven to Nigerians that articles of on uh, that was signed on a Saturday it is not a forgery. We have proven and shown court documents. I would like to even show you. Maybe the work is too long. You can have a bite of chicken and uh, and um, an ewa combination or whatever. With you corn. understand? With Agbado. corn or agbado and all of that. And you know, take a break, rest a little. Then he will get for us a copy of that certificate that he was issued. You know, in advance from Lagos State, uh, Lagos uh, Government College, Lagos, even before the school was established. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless you. We'll take questions at, uh, uh, going forward. Or, uh, I think three, four, five questions before we close the press briefing. Thank you. Yes, questions? <laughs> well, if there are no questions, we'll say this once. Uh, let me say this uh, because uh, we believe that uh, uh, we are before the court of public opinion and we are before our courts, the courts in the land. And interestingly, you know that if you are an athlete, I don't know if you have seen an athlete before, if an athlete is accused of doping, 
and investigations prove that a, an athlete used drug enhancing, uh, performance enhancing drugs to win a race. What, do, what does the Athletics Federation, what Athletics Federation or Athletics Federation of Nigeria do? You are stripped of the medal. If you like, win 10 gold medals. The moment you are, if you, it's found out that you use drug, uh, performance enhancing drugs, you are stripped of your medal. The rest is left for the Almighty and the, our esteemed justices to decide. God bless you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let, let, let me add, just for, for historical perspective, that uh, in 2013, Governor, former Governor Pashola did attempt, he was supposed to start March, to bring back Saturday as a working day in Lagos. Some ministries, some departments, and some agencies. You know, if Fashola did take cognizance of the fact that at some point in time in the history of Lagos, especially the military era, I mean, there was work, public servants worked on Saturday. I mean, I wonder, you know, how Bola ate Tinumbu, with all of the magics that have been associated with him, who ruled Lagos for eight years. He was the first governor in this democratic journey in 1999 that he didn't know that work took place in Lagos on Saturday. Because if he did, he would have saved his aides and uh, his cause, you know, the embarrassment of going on this journey of fertility. I mean, think about, think about that. He should know. What they are trying to do is that they are looking for company. I mean, that's not the kind of company that Atiku Abubakar keeps. It's not the kind of company that he keeps. And there is nothing that he can do, there's nothing that he can manufacture, you know, to taint, you know, his image that has been, uh, you know, garnered over decades. We also hear from the grapevine that they are looking for his uh, records. In Nigerian customs. Nigerian customs. <laughs> Although they reported immigration. And that was wrong reporting. He worked in the Nigerian customs. Well, that's their headache. It's not the headache of Atuku Abubakar. And they did say that the records of 1990, or thereabout, that was what they were able to get. They couldn't get it. It shows that clearly that Atuku was not the only person involved. I mean, the federal capital was moved from Lagos to Abuja at some point in time. Maybe because of the nature of of you know you know of, of, of our you know institutions and uh, you know archival uh, you know system, it has not been able for them to ensure that all of the records from as far back as the 50s and the 40s were you know properly documented and brought to Lagos. But we will encourage them not to go on any further discovery. I mean, they have been an embarrassment unto themselves because they don't even know the history of the public service you know, in Nigeria. I mean, that is, that is shameful. And like, the, and like the Yorubas will sing, Eni Jali Lekon, Toba Darobori, Asho Lelo Dabora. Is it, it is clear. Ganifa Emi started it. We are here today. We wish Nigeria the best. God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. <laughs> You've been watching an Arise News live coverage. We're now returning to normal programming.